right, guys. It is a gorgeous moonlit night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here on uh, it is a Monday night, November 7th, 2022. And uh, so just there is some confusion about the uh, eclipse. The full lunar eclipse is tonight, meaning early tomorrow morning before sunrise on Tuesday morning. Of course, <coughs> I will have to miss the blood moon, but uh, anyway, just making sure you, if you want to watch it, that you don't miss it. Uh, so anyway, it's been a few days, I guess, since I have done a Chronicle of the Collapse. You know, I'm trying to avoid the, the you know, that dog and pony show over there in Africa, and uh, good Lord, so, uh, since that's the only thing they're talking about, pretty much, in the mainstream media, so I just had to check with my, uh, my uh, fellow collapsitarian, uh, my sister in doom, Sandy Shellis, over at Environmental Coffee House, so she could tell me what stories I am or am not allowed to cover on my show because, you know, I do not want to risk the uh, <laughs> inciting the wrath of Sandy. So, anyway, Sandy, I don't think, uh, shockingly, I don't think you and Jennifer are, are, are picking up on this one uh, tomorrow, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover it. Now, this one, in the second to the last paragraph, they make a passing reference to the dog and pony show, but uh, I will just stop before we get to the second, to the last paragraph. Uh, not sure if the timing of this new dire, uh, grim report, this is not a report from the United Nations. This is a report from a, this little dog, I need to put you down. So this is out of the Guardian. There's a few versions of this. This is the Guardian's view of it. Uh, world faces terminal loss of Arctic sea ice during summer's report warns. And, well, at some point we will get to... Uh, whoever, uh, the uh, University of Massachusetts at Amherst, I guess. Anyway, take it away. <clears throat> the climate crisis has pushed the planet's stores of ice to a widespread collapse that was, quote, unthinkable just a decade ago. Close quote, with Arctic sea ice certain to vanish in summers and ruinous sea level rise from melting glaciers now already in motion. A major new report has warned. And I just want you, I'll come back to this. Nowhere did that say that melting sea ice is adding to global sea level rise. If, if there's anything you heard me say that melting sea ice is adding uh, to global sea level rise, you can't understand the English. Okay. Ruinous sea levels, sea level rise from melting glaciers all on land. Glaciers are on land. Melting glaciers add to sea level rise. Melting sea ice does not make the sea rise. Okay? I think anybody with a brain uh, listening to this show already knows this, but in case you're as conf confused about that, Anyway, 
All right, I love the lack of hopium in this story. That's what appeals to me, is that this is pretty much a hopium-free article. Little bit at the very, very end, you know, with the dog and pony show connection, which we're not going to talk about. But other than that, th this is pretty straightforward doomer porn. Straightforward doomer porn right here in Yahoo News from The Guardian. <clears throat> Even if... Even if planet heating emissions are radically cut, the world's vast ice sheets at the poles will continue to melt away for hundreds of years, causing up to three meters of sea level rise that will imperil coastal cities, the report states. So again, uh, they're not talking about uh, three meters in the next few decades. They're talking about hundreds of years, and uh, I, I'm going to vote with Book Hermit on this one that the world's cities will have a hell of a lot more on their plate than global sea level rise, you, you know, in, in the year... Uh, I, I don't know, 2300, will there be any world cities left uh, on the, on the seacoast or anywhere else? The terminal loss of sea ice from the Arctic during summers could arrive within a decade. So they're talking the blue ocean event could, could arrive within a decade and now cannot be avoided. Cannot be. There is no way we are going to uh, kick the can down the road on this blue ocean event. It's coming up. Uh, they're saying within the next decade. Of course, the big question you know, with me is, so what? Uh, but I guess we'll find out so what, won't we? Uh, and then they have a quote from this fellow named Robert Mallet, kind of out of the middle of nowhere. I guess we meet Robert later. Quote, we are driving a whole environment to extinction, meaning the polar ecosystems are, well, we're, Robbie, I hate to tell you, we're driving a, uh, an entire planet the whole planet to extinction. But anyway, that's another rant for another day. Okay, this is Julie Brigham Gret, a scientist at University of Massachusetts Amherst and a co-author of the report uh, talking about the sea ice. Quote, there is nothing we can do about that now. We have just screwed up and let the system warm too much already. That milestone has now passed. So the next thing we need to or the next thing we need to avoid is ice shelf collapses in Antarctica and the further breakdown of the further breakdown of the ice systems in Greenland. We cannot stuff the genie back into the bottle once they are gone, close quote. <clears throat> Disappearance of sea ice, although it will not raise uh, sea levels, one iota will open up the dark Arctic Ocean, which as we all know will absorb rather than reflect heat, causing global heating to escalate further, which will, in turn, melt the glaciers, you know, uh, on land, which will uh, raise sea levels. So this is how melting sea ice is indirectly responsible for sea level rise. The famous albedo effect, and again, it's, I'm just thinking as much of a doomer as I am, I am. I, I just personally 
feel like the albedo effect is overstated, but I'm not a climatologist, so how the hell do I know? Uh, anyway, it, meaning the disappearance of sea ice, will also upend the region's ecosystem, harming everything from algae to large animals such as seals and polar bears that need the sea ice for hunting. <clears throat> okay, so here's Robbie Mallet, a sea ice expert at University College London Earth Sciences. Not sure whether Robbie is male or female or whether Robbie is part of the author of the report. Um, quote, it is a terminal diagnosis, and now we have to live with consequences, said Mallet. It's been quite emotional to think of a time by the end of my career when I will see an Arctic free of ice. It's been a shocking few years in Greenland with ice disappearing before our eyes. We are driving a whole environment to extinction, close quote. Uh, okay, this is technically the name of this report is the state of the cryosphere. Cryosphere does not mean climatologist crying. Uh, it means the ice, the parts of the earth that are covered with ice is the cryosphere. The loss of Arctic sea ice is, quote, not the only sign of growing cryosphere collapse, according to the state of the cryosphere report. And if you go on the link to this article from The Guardian, they link you, to, you know, to the full report with all the 50 cent words in it and whatnot. <clears throat> In just the past year, researchers have been astonished by the sight of rain at the summit of Greenland's enormous ice sheet for the first time ever on record, followed by rain rather than snow falling on Antarctica in March amid startling heat waves at both poles with temperatures 40 degrees C, otherwise known as 72 degrees Fahrenheit, above normal. The report documents shell damage to crustaceans in the Arctic Ocean, a sign that the seawater is acidifying due to greenhouse gas emissions, the loss of 5% of glacier ice in the Alps, over just a single summer and a record low sea ice extent around Antarctica earlier this year. And then they link you into that for all the deniers about that. <clears throat> a huge amount of sea level rise appears to be already locked in due to the rampant burning of fossil fuels, the report states with sections of the West Antarctic ice sheet potentially collapsing even without any further emissions over the coming centuries, causing more than four meters of additional sea level rise. Greenland's ice loss has already committed around 30 centimeters to sea level rise. Not sure how many inches that is, maybe eight or nine inches. Um, let's see. I need to tread carefully through here. I'm getting close to the end. And we've got to avoid the dog and pony show. Okay, getting back to Brigham Gret. Uh, the cost to places like Florida and Bangladesh and the Nile Delta are just enormous. It's going to be a huge strain, 
said Brigham Grad, who added that the Arctic is now now shifting towards a state not seen in three million years. Quote, we cannot allow ourselves to get to such a place. But what worries me is we will not respond to this emergency until it is in front of us, close quote. Well, she just said there's not a damn thing we can do about it. That it's already in there. Anyway, the Arctic is heating up around four times as quickly as the global average, which combined with record heat waves in Antarctica risks a rapid meltwater pulse. I love that, uh, that term, meltwater pulse, not seen at any time in the past 130,000 years, during which time human civilization has developed. The sur this surge in water could prove disastrous for coastal areas. And anybody, uh, you know, into the city of Atlantis and the Great Flood and all of that. Uh, I, I don't know if that was a typo, 130, that they meant to say 13,000 years. Because, I, I, I mean, it's pretty clear to me, guys. Again, this is just me. Maybe I'm reading too much Graham Hancock. Um... Uh, but uh, it, it seems pretty clear to me that the flooding of, quote, Atlantis and the Great Flood and Noah's, all of that stuff, what it was, was a rapid meltwater pulse. Uh, that, uh, and, and I, you know, it, I think this is the first time I have seen this mentioned, uh, you know, in, in a scientific report, this term rapid meltwater pulse, which you can take your 300-year timeline uh, about rising sea levels and throw them out the narrowly, what's it called, the rapidly... Uh, closing window that slammed shut about 30 years ago. Anyway, uh, I will not be surprised if in my lifetime we don't see that. Meanwhile, glaciers in places such as the Himalayas and the Andes are winnowing away, risking the drinking water supplies of tens of millions of people and conversely raising the threat of disastrous flooding. Talk about a rapid meltwater pulse. Uh, and then of course we get into that hopium happy horse shit over there at the dog and pony show which we don't talk about on this channel. So anyway, I, I love uh, some of the comments. I get all Dale. All right, this is a, a fairly weird one. Uh, I'm thinking Dale. I, I honestly think that book hermit's name is Dale. Book hermit? Is this you, buddy? I think Book Hermit has shown up in Yahoo News. Uh, take it away, Dale, who I suspect is Book Hermit. <clears throat> Good. Embrace the warm. This will take place over centuries. So just build the new stuff a foot higher every generation or move. Even better, get humans back down to a sustainable population. Unbelievable. It took Dale, who I suspect is Book Hermit, to bring that up. Uh, Dale and or Book Hermit getting one thumbs up and two thumbs down 
for suggesting getting humans back down to a sustainable population. I suspect that a rapid meltwater pulse uh, might help get humans back down to a sustainable population pretty quick. Okay. <clears throat> Here is Dennis. All of the Arctic sea ice could melt and it would not raise sea level at all. Hmm. Humpty Dumpty had a response to the clueless moron Dennis who has three thumbs up. <clears throat> Nowhere in this article does it say melting sea ice will raise sea levels. Nowhere. See, this is one of these things where these clueless moron climate change deniers, they don't know how to read English. Apparently, Humpty Dumpty's original comment was rejected uh, by uh, the Yahoo community because Humpty Dumpty suggested that Dennis was not a native English speaker. So, uh, but, okay, that was Dennis. Here is, what does that headline even mean? This is all nonsense. Who is behind this propaganda? Yes, here is James. News flash, this just in, ice melts in the summer. Four thumbs up. Harry, it is all bull, not true, four thumbs up. Here is blah, blah. I guess the writers of this research are calling for war, banning straws and plastic bags in California is not enough, time for war, yes. Here is Nikki, and still nothing is happening. Three thumbs up. Here is Rod. The ice gets thicker every year. Quit with the one world order. We all drive the same car, eat the same garbage, while the ruling class is tyrannical. Climate change is a hoax. Two thumbs up. Here is Snatchy. Wasn't that supposed to happen in 2020? Here is Ice Melting in Summer. Shocking discovery. Yes. How about from Make Tar and Feathering Cool again? There was a paper published recently that said the polar bears actually don't need sea ice at all. And in fact, they may do better without so much of it. Two thumbs up. Here is Michael W. snoring louder. Here is Rich. More propaganda. Arctic sea ice is currently within the normal range and has not declined for over 15 years. It has been almost perfectly flat ever since Al Gore made this same ridiculous claim back in 2007. Yes, and finally, Andy Pandy, stop breaking the ice apart and puking out diesel fumes with your research ships. <laughs> anyway, I think the comments uh, are really... Well, you need to read the, uh, the, lev the abysmal level of ignorance. So it, it's hilarious how Humpty Dumpty uh, gets his comments ripped down for violating the terms of the Yahoo community while these clueless morons can drone on and on and on. 
uh, getting all of these thumbs up and their comments are totally fine with the Yahoo community. Just absolute point blank uh, disinformation, misinformation, disinformation. Uh, you better believe that these climate change deniers are taking full advantage of the Yahoo News comment section to spread their unadulterated horseshit. But anyway, uh, I don't think that article was on Sandy's list, but be sure to check out Environmental Coffee House tomorrow night because it sounds like Sandy and Jennifer have a lot to talk about. Anyway, I'm going to go uh, take a look at this gorgeous full moon and brother Jupiter, although I won't be around awake for the eclipse. Get out there and enjoy the blood moon eclipse while you still can. I guess there will not be another eclipse for three, lunar eclipse for three years. But I will not be setting my alarm clock. <clears throat> seen one blood moon, you've seen them all, as Ronald Reagan would probably say if he were alive. And, uh, oh yeah, what is tomorrow? Something, you're supposed to get out and do something tomorrow. Get out and do something tomorrow. I have to, uh, what I have to do tomorrow is, uh, start citing my uh, third tiny house is what I have on my docket tomorrow. Nailing dead hemlock trees to the site of a tiny house while I try to remember what it is I'm supposed to do tomorrow. Bye guys.